What's going on everyone? It's Dude from Ukraine. So today I'm going to be doing top 10 tips and tricks that I came up with for the iPad mini. Now you guys enjoyed the Nexus 7 top 10 tips and tricks and found it really helpful. So I decided to do one for the iPad mini. This is going to be great for new users and also users uh, that are currently wanting to enhance their iPad experience. So let's take a look at it. For my number one, I chose security. Now, I think security is one of the most important things to keep your iPad secure in case it gets stolen, in case somebody gets a hold of it and tries to get into it and access your information. It's very important to keep it secure. You can do so by going to Settings, General, and then going to Pass Lock, and then turn on Pass Lock. Then you can set your password, say 11111. Obviously, not a very good password, but you can set it like so. And you can change a few other settings here. You can turn it off here as well. We'll go back to home screen. We'll put it to sleep. When you unlock it, it looks the same. You slide and then it uh, asks you to enter the four digit passcode. And it's a great way to keep the intruders away from your iPad if, in case they get hold of it. Now, another way is to find my iPhone. Download this app. It's free. It's by Apple. Also set up your iCloud as well. So then you can log on to iCloud. Uh, you can also do it from any of your devices or uh web browser as well uh, you will get to this screen like right here you will log on uh, you will also be able to set a uh, voice message kind of like uh, if you in case you lose it inside your house uh, the ringtone will ring and you, it will help you find the iPad you can also erase the whole iPad from your computer or any other device where you log on to iCloud or this app um, you can also see where the iPad is located as long as it's online and also you can uh, send a message saying hey please return to this address or call this number it's a great way to keep your iPad protected and secure for my number two, I chose Spotlight. Spotlight is a great way to navigate through the iPad and also find the things you're looking for, like contacts, apps, um, web browser, like Wikipedia and that type of stuff. It's an amazing way to find things that you cannot find on your iPad or don't remember where you put something. It's a great way to navigate through the iPad. As you can see, you can just start typing like music and it will find the uh, app music. You can also search the web, search Wikipedia. It's a great way to do that. I will post all of the things you can do in the description, in my video description, so you can see exactly what all you can do with that. For number three, I chose folders. Now, folders are a great way to keep yourself organized. I see still there's a lot of people out there that do not use folders. They have a ton of pages on their iPad, like three, four pages, just all apps spread out everywhere. It's just a difficult way to find things when you're trying to find something, and it's just not organized. Now, folder is an easy way uh, to keep yourself organized by just tapping on the app, holding it down. As you can see, apps will start shaking. You drag it on top of a folder or on top of another app, like so, and it will create the folder. Also, the folder will uh, get titled automatically f by whatever categories it sees. So if you put a bunch of games together, it'll, it'll name it games. You can also change the name as well, and you can put multiple apps in a folder like that, and then it will save you space um, from having to slide through multiple screens, and uh, it will keep yourself organized. For number four, I chose multitasking. Now, multitasking on the iPad on iOS 6 is currently not as good as some of the other tablets available, but it's still a great way to navigate through the iPad and kind of see what you've recently used. So you can access that by going, double tapping the home button twice, and you can see this is the bar. It will show you all the apps that you've been uh, opening or have been using throughout the day. You can also close these apps as well by holding it down like so, and then closing, and then you can close them out um, like so. Now, it's a great way to keep uh, navigating through the iPad. Also, if you scroll to the left, you will get this bar right here, which allow you to control the, your uh, music controls like play, forward, back, um, your volume, uh, your iPod here, and then also brightness as well. So it's a great way to control those settings and also navigating through some of the recent things that you've been doing. Now for number five, I chose multitasking gestures. It's another great way to multitask on the iPad. Um, it's a great way to use the gestures that are available on the iPad as well. So uh, you can do that by going to settings, general, and then scrolling down a little bit. And as you can see, multitasking gestures, it'll tell you what to do and how to use them. And you can also turn them off as well if you don't like them. Now, one thing you can do with them is taking your four finger, scrolling up. It's an easy way to access your multitasking bar instead of double tapping the home button. Now you can scroll down like that and it will go down. Now you can also exit from apps really easily instead of hitting the home button with your four or five fingers like so, just swiping and pinching in. So it's really easy, I'll show you one more time. Pinch and it exits the app, it's really easy, it's a great way to speed things up 
Another thing you can do is taking your four fingers and sliding either left or right, and it will slide through the multitasking bar through your recent applications that you've been uh, using and opening, like so. So it's an easy way. So you can, if you have Facebook open and Twitter open, you can s switch between both apps really easily, or you can just double tap the uh, home button to go and do it that way. For number six, I chose lock screen and mute button. Now these things might be very common for current users, but if you are new to the iPad, uh, these might come in handy. So as you can see here on the top right, you can flip this button down. As you can see that little icon pops up and your iPad is muted. So you will not hear notifications and that type of stuff. So then you won't have to use the volume rockers to turn down your volume on the iPad. You can just do that like so. Now also, as you can see, the iPad rotates into landscape mode. It's a great feature, but sometimes it might get annoying if you're reading a book and you tilt the iPad a little bit and then it rotates and you're just kind of like, oh my God, what is going on? So you can uh, turn it off by uh, hitting the home button twice. Like so, you get the multitasking bar, scroll to the left, hit this little uh, button here, and it will lock the iPad in portrait mode. And then you can go back and turn it off if you need landscape. As you can see, it will not rotate now. For number seven, I chose accessibility settings. Now these are amazing. Apple has made them really helpful for a ton of different people uh, to accommodate different preferences whichever person might have. So you can access that by going to settings, general scrolling down and going to accessibility now as you can see it can help you with vision hearing learning physical and motor skills and things like that so it's going to accommodate you in so many different ways it's, it's just simply amazing so you, you can have voiceover there's a ton of different settings you can choose the speaking rate how fast it goes and things like that there's a ton of uh, different settings there you can also zoom if you're having issues seeing and things like that you can turn on the zoom feature so then you can zoom in on your ipad so then you can see a lot easier um, you can change the volume here. Um, you can also have guided access here. Uh, it's a great feature as well. Physical and motor, um, excessive touch is great because it can uh, do some amazing things for you. But um, I'll, as you can see, it pops up right there. You can hit that. So you can access Siri this way easier, um, your device, uh, all these settings here. Um, you can also add favorites to this as well. And then you can access home like this. So it's great for to accommodate your needs by also if say say one of your buttons doesn't work this is a great way to replace one of those buttons if you don't want to fix your ipad for example for number eight i chose screenshot now screenshot is an amazing feature you can take pretty much a screenshot a picture all your screen so if you are found a recipe online you can take a screenshot of it so you don't have to copy and paste it or write it down or something like that it's a great feature now you can do that by at the top, there's a sleep wake button and there's a home button. If you press them at the same time, as you can see, your screen will flash like so. And it took that picture. Now you can go to photos and access that picture that you just took. As you can see, I just took a picture of my screen. For number nine, I chose copy, paste, um, select all and that type of stuff. So you can uh, easily go on the web. If you find something, can copy and paste there. If you're sending a mass text message, you want to send it to multiple friends, you can copy and paste it. It's a very easy thing to do. I'm going to show you to you in the notes. Um, so as you can see, I typed this out right here. By also on the iPad mini, what you can also do is dictate right here um, at the bottom, just kind of like a quick tip. You can hit that and you can say it to the iPad and it will type it out. And it's pretty accurate. Occasionally it messes up, but it's a great uh, tool to use. But uh, as you can see, you can double tap like so on a word and you can cut it, copy it, uh, suggestion you can also do define which will uh, tell you the definition of the word so we can hit copy now we'll find a spot we'll return say right here tap once and you can see we can select select all or paste and we can paste it like so so that's how you copy and paste it's a very uh, helpful tool I always use it it's and for number 10, I chose reading list. It's a great feature to use uh, if you're reading a lot of articles and things like that on the web. And then you know you're going to be traveling. You're not going to have internet connection or something like that. You can save those articles and read them while you're offline. It's a great feature. Now, you can go to Safari, for example. I opened up a page here on Mac Rumors. Uh, it's a great uh, blogging site. Now, how you can do that is by going like hitting this little arrow right here by the web browser. Um, then we can hit add to reading list it will quickly add it to the reading list while it's doing that um, you can also hit a reader here and kind of go into this view here so it's a lot easier to read and, and not see all the ads and things like that so it's a, another uh, quick helpful hint
hint. And then you can hit this little book here. And as you can see, there's a few different features here, like bookmarks, recently read, and things like that. And then there's reading list right here, the glasses. Now we'll turn off our Wi-Fi real quick, and then I'll show you that it still works while we're offline. See, the Wi-Fi is off. We're gonna go back to Safari. We can refresh this page here. As you can see, it's not working because there's no internet connection, but we can go to back to reading list. Since it's saved on the reading list, we can still read the article and things like that. So it's a great way to read things offline while uh, you're traveling or just whenever you don't have an internet connection. And as a bonus, I decided to add this uh, little quick tip as well. Um, you can download the Kindle uh, app from Amazon. Um, it's actually just going to the Apple's App Store. Uh, searching right here at the top right, Kindle, that's how you actually search apps in the App Store in case you didn't know. And then uh, just finding the app, downloading it, you'll type in your you know iTunes password and information, things like that. Once you download, it's a free app, you can open it, you can log in with your Kindle account, so you can access all, all your previous books you downloaded on your Kindle and things like that. And then also the library is just huge comparing to the Apple's uh, bookstore, so it's a great way to read more books and also access your previous books that you have from your Kindle. I believe you can also download the Barton's and Noble bookstore as well. So it's a great way uh, if you love to read and things like that. Uh, you can do that. It's a free app, download it, and then you can access your previous library. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it will help you out. Let me know uh, in the comments uh, what tips help you out. If you have any other tips for other users as well, maybe somebody will read your comment. And uh, if you enjoyed the content, please feel free to subscribe and uh, you'll see the next videos when I release them uh, that way. And again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.